So I was asked to build a uh, chessboard for a customer and they left the design open to me. So I started this build like I do most builds where the design is up to myself and um, I tested out a design. Luckily it worked and I rolled with it the rest of the build. But the design was basically instead of just having solid checkered squares to have um, a middle solid square of dark and light lumber and then to have a mitered box around the square of dark and white lumber but a different species to kind of create a nice pattern without it being too cluttered or um, hard to look at. So I started by making the inner squares which were three quarters by three quarters and I was using um, this exotic wood decking that I have and walnut for one and then oak and maple for the other. Once I had my three square, uh, three quarter inch squares, I figured out that in order to get an inch and a half squares, I had to use three eighth inch thickness material. So that means for all of my outer edges, I could rip them into inch, inch and a half pieces, which is what I'm doing right here with the oak, and then rip those inch and a half into three eighth inch strips, and that would wrap perfectly around my three quarter inch square. So the size of this board was dictated by the board the customer had, and the squares on the original board are an inch and a half. So that is why I went with those sizes. So then I had some walnut that I also cut down to inch and a half slabs. And all of this lumber is left over from other projects. The nice thing about cutting boards and chess boards, because I'm building this quite similarly to a cutting board, is that um, I had all the material already milled up and ready to go. So I did some rough calculations and because my walnut is thicker than the oak I'm using, three strips of the oak should get me enough for the miters because I'm going to cut them into thirds and then the walnut I'll cut into two and um, use that. So I'm keeping the inch and a half uh, width but like I said that inch and a half will then get ripped into three eighths of an inch and then I'll have to put bevels on the side. Now a lot of cutting, a lot of chess boards are actually made with a very thin veneer over something like a particle board, which is the, the cutting board that the customer originally had, but he specifically wanted a solid wood board. So that is why the thickness of this is what it is. It's actually easier to make them wrapped around particle board and you usually can't tell the difference, but he specifically wanted um, solid lumber. So this is taking those pieces and cutting them into the 3 8 inch strips. I cut extra for everything because um, with all this setup, you'll have the most consistency in all of your pieces if you're cutting everything at the same time. So once I had all those strips, I could then go put through and put 45s on either side. I did a test piece. Um, you could see it's about an inch and a half the fence away from the blade and it worked really well. So I added a feather board to try and get a more consistent cut, but the feather board really ended up just getting in the way of cutting these 45s on the edges. So after the first trial of doing that, I ended up taking the feather board off and just sending through all of the pieces uh, just with a push stick and that ended up working out fine. So this, I believe I had 16 strips because there's eight panels per board and that means I have, I'm gonna have to make eight, uh, four white sections and four brown sections. So that means that I needed 16 of these to wrap around all the pieces. So this was just a matter of sending all of the pieces through. So once I had all the pieces, I had I taped these together with the center portion first, just so that it was easier to glue them up. Um, before I did this, because especially the oak I was using had some spalted parts to it, so it the miters came out a little jagged on certain edges, I was definitely expecting to have to deal with some gaps on the final board, but since it's not a cutting board, I wasn't as concerned about it. So you can see how I'm taping up these miters. This, in my opinion, is the easiest way to do these. And then that, that square rod will fit right in the center and create a nice little pattern. So that's basically um, gonna be the glue up. 
So in order to glue all these together, I could just loosen that tape, add a bunch of glue. I'm very liberal with glue, which makes a mess, but I wanna make sure I have full coverage. I could add that piece back in, tape these in place, and then go around the whole piece and you're using the blue tape you're really putting a lot of leverage on it and, and pulling that gap together. You can't really see it in the video, but each piece of tape I'm adding, you could see the glue squeezing out of the joint a little bit more as I go, which means that it's pulling those miters together. So this is kind of a tedious process doing this with eight of them, and at the end your fingers will hurt, but it's a great way to glue up these miters. I let those set up overnight, and then you could come in in the morning and take all of that tape off and then I'm left with my eight blanks. So all I did was lightly sand off the glue residue on these and they fit together nicely enough that I didn't do anything else before I was gonna glue all eight blanks together, which was also kind of nice, mainly because it's still edge grain here, or, or flat grain actually, so I didn't have to worry about it being hard to sand. I just got that glue off. And then um, I left everything long, so I went through and trimmed them down the radial arm saw. The one edge was long, so I just used the pencil to kind of gauge where to cut it, just so that I didn't need all that excess. And then I'm left with a shorter blank. These were about 12 inches long, because I was gonna make it about an inch thick, so I, I, I gave myself some wiggle room to be able to get eight, uh, eight pieces that are about an inch thick and then I could glue all of these together. So I had tape on the top because they fit together nicely, the nicest in one direction. So I marked all of the tops the way I wanted, used some bar clamps to clamp everything together, tried to get them as lined as perfectly as possible, then used a bar clamp on top to keep them as flat as possible for the glue up. And it's still pretty cold out, even though I've been really lucky this winter, it hasn't been really, really, really cold. But I still, in the winter time, let stuff set up overnight, whereas in the summer, you usually don't have to wait as long. So the next morning, I take it out of the clamps and send that panel through the drum sander. I've dialed in the drum sander a little bit better than the last time I used it and it just made very quick work of the sanding. And the nice thing about the drum sander is it's gonna be leave you a completely flat surface where sometimes with a belt sander or an orbital sander, you'll get pits and valleys in your piece. So you could see there's some, there's some hairline cracks in the piece, but not a ton. So at this point, I was pretty happy um, with the progress. Um, on the side here, I'm pointing out the fact that there's a little bit of a ridge, and that was from when I cut it with the table saw, and I never fixed it, but I really should have. So that ridge, you'll see later in the video after I cut these, I figure out a way to work around that, but because um, this is going to be flipped. So before cutting these, I just trimmed off the edge, and like I said, I'm cutting these into um, one-inch blanks. So I just set up a stop on my crosscut sled and then rip this into eight pieces. Like I said, I um, made this long enough to get eight pieces and I had a little extra left over. I didn't cut them all, I only cut the eight and the eight I cut ended up working out fine. And then once this is done, I could finally see what the pattern's gonna look like. You really don't know with cutting boards and something like this, what your pattern's gonna look like until this step. So I could turn them all on their sides and then flip each, every other one. And then that will be my basic chessboard pattern. So at this point, I was also very happy because as you could see from the video, there's really only a couple visible hairline cracks in the board. Most of the miters uh, glued up really nicely. You can see there's little tiny ones, and um, I'll fill those later with epoxy. In general, this turned out quite nicely, which was which was pretty nice. So I, I worked out those two pieces. You could see the little edge. So I just took that edge, put it on the top, and replaced it with a flat side, and that was a lucky a lucky fix to that mistake. I didn't have to worry about that edge because I just used the two pieces that had it on the edge of the board and that worked out fine. And even without clamps, this fits together quite nicely. So to glue that up, very similar process to the other glue ups, 
I'm just adding glue on the edges. I have two calls on the side. It's just some scrap wood with masking tape on it because you want to keep this, this board very square. I didn't want to have to trim the sides to square it up because then my um, inch and a half squares would be uneven on the edges. So with the calls in place, I then put this back in pipe clamps clamp the whole piece and I was really good on this build about removing my glue once it's set up a little bit I don't film it but I did do that this time around especially on the top side of the piece just makes life easier um, hammer down one of the high spots and let that set up overnight as well so I could take this out of the clamps and then put this to the drum sander the drum sander did a really good job of cleaning this up but the other important part was it uh, glued up very flat so I didn't have to have a ton of high spots that I had to worry about I just removed the excess glue on the bottom and then can send it to the drum sander and I don't remember what paper I have in here I think it's 120 so I, I sanded it down and the drum sander not only is great for sanding stuff down but later on the piece because it's already at 120 I had very little hand sanding to do which is awesome because I don't know a lot of people that enjoy sanding so then for this I'm going to be making a frame that this whole checkerboard will sit in. This design is not mine. There's a lot of people on the internet that are using a similar design, but the first time I saw it, I'm going to link his YouTube in my description. It's MTM Wood, and he seems to specialize in chess boards and cutting boards. He makes amazing work. I want to say he's Russian, but I could be wrong. So basically what it is is you make a frame. I'm making mine quite similar to a thick picture frame and the inside edge of the board as well as the inside edge of the frame, which isn't going to be solid, will be rabbited so that the board, because it's, it's solid lumber, is gonna move and flex much more so than a veneered board over particle board. Um, that little rabbit will account for all of that flex and you won't have to worry about it. It will hide the movement of the wood. So I started by just cutting 45s on two pieces of cherry, putting the board basically where I wanted it, and then making measurements off the edge. So I made little tick marks, and then I put 45s on those, and then those were gonna be my two sides. The board is not exactly the same measurement in both sides. It's off by like an eighth of an inch. So the two sides weren't exactly the same side, but you can see where I have those two marks. Um, the only problem with using the miter gauge on my crosscut sled, even though it gives a really nice mitered cut, is that you can't do it with long pieces. So I just took my saw and trimmed them down to size and then cleaned up the miters on the crosscut sled because I have like a 60 tooth blade in, in uh, my table saw and it leaves very, very smooth edges. So once I had the first two, I could go through and measure them off my originals and just trim those down and then I'll have my four sides and this is just cherry that I had left over from I would made a coffee table over the summer this was just leftover lumber and once again it was already planed and jointed which makes life so much easier so I could put my board in place and then I'm going to mark and cut the rabbits and the cherry before I glue it together. It will just make life a little bit easier. So I'm marking where my board's gonna go. And then I'm coming in a little bit because you're not gonna cut that whole recess. So I ended up cutting, I believe, about one inch rabbits on the inside. So I have a, my sacrificial fence against the blade and I'm just cutting a three quarter inch rabbit to start on all of my cherry pieces. I'm making it wider than the three quarter inch rabbit I'm putting on the board so that there's a little bit of room for play. So once I had the three quarter inch rabbit uh, set up on my table saw, I decided to do the board as well. Now since the board is end grain lumber, I only took off about an eighth of an inch at a time. I think if I would have taken off more, it would have really tore out the sides of the board. So I creeped up on that and I ended up cutting about three eighths of an inch off of the board over about four passes. So that's the finished piece with that rabbit on the edge and then you can see that um, it will sit proud of the frame but still be recessed and I just think it's a nice clean look. 
So after that, I moved the fence over a little bit and sent the rest of my mitered edges across so I would have a thicker rabbit. It's about, like I said, about an inch. Once I had all those pieces, I can glue it together, but you'll see kind of how that board sits in that frame once it's glued. I used strap clamps for this with the corners on it. These things are great. Um, if you don't have any, I recommend buying them. You could probably make something out of a strap clamp and, and wooden corners, but someone gave me these and they just work great for stuff like picture frames. So I let that set up overnight. I could take the clamps off and then sand this. This was a pretty easy sand because like I said, the cherry had already been through the planer. I just took off the residue. There was a little bit of a high spot on one of the corners. And then to finish up the frame, I decided to chamfer the top and bottom edges. I wanted a very subtle detail design. Um, if you check out the YouTube channel, the, the guy I'm talking about, he makes some really decorative, pretty frames, but I wanted something very simple for this because the board itself already is very detailed. I did end up chamfering the inside edge of the, the frame as well, but I don't think I show it. So to fill the, the little holes I have, I mixed up some epoxy, with some wood putty and I to make it a little bit darker I added a little bit of stain into this so I would go through and do the brown spots and then I had maple sawdust so I just used maple once it dried I could go through and I did the pieces on the bottom as well because there's the the peak hole on the bottom so um, if you flip it over I didn't want you to be able to see gaps in that as well you could go through with the sander sander and just sand down that epoxy so for the finish on this, which I'm not going to show the whole thing, but I'm finishing it with teak oil, and then once the teak oil dries, I'm going to put a clear coat on it. So the reason I'm not showing the whole thing is because the teak oil, I usually put like four or five coats on, and in the winter time, it will take about five days to do that. Then it has to dry for at least 72 hours, and then you could clear coat it. So this won't be done for at least another week. But with it freshly teak oiled, that's basically what it is going to look like. Now, the way that he finishes his boards is he puts a little washer into the corner and then some dabs of adhesive on the bottom of the board, and that's how everything is held in place. So that's how it will be finished. So there'll be a little shadow edge around the entire perimeter. So I wanted the frame to be big enough that if you wanted to play while putting um, your pieces on the side, you could, but you didn't have to. And this is basically the finished board.